Hello, this is Daniel King reporting on round nine of the Istanbul Olympiad. The tournament was blown wide open again today as the USA defeated Russia. So now there are four teams in joint uh, first place, uh, USA, Russia, China and Armenia. But my play of the day comes from the Ukraine-France match and it's the game between Vasily Ivanchuk and Maxime Vachier-Lagrave. We know what to expect from Ivanchuk. Uncompromising play, and that's what we got today. Let's take a look at the game. I gave a clip earlier in the tournament that where Ivanchuk was going for the win but finally self-destructed. Well, let's see what happens today. It's a Sicilian defence and the Nidorf variation, one of my favourites with black. And Ivanchuk played perhaps the most uncompromising variation, bishop g5. And now queen c7, well this is something of a sideline from Vachier Lagrave, but uh, not a bad move, of course it invites white to double the f-pawns. But this is now a very unbalanced position, of course. Black has the two bishops and a clump of pawns in the middle. Um, I like to play this position with knight c6 and then castle on the queen side without playing my pawn forward to b5 because I think the king can be relatively safe on the queen side there. But just compare that position with what Vachier Le Grave does, which is to play b5. This is the standard counter-attacking move in the Nidorf. You want to advance, drive the knight away, and so weaken white control over the centre. The problem is, this makes it less easy for black to castle on the queen side. And here, a lot of players actually castle queen side for white, but I think Ivanchuk's move castles king side is actually better, because if black castles queenside then you always have the option to try and break things open with a4. Okay let's see what happens so knight c6, knight b3. Okay it's often good to advance this pawn for black just see how far it goes and you know you can claim that this is you've created a slight weakness in white's king position. But for the moment Ivanchuk is just developing nicely, but actually he's not committing himself. He's playing this very cleverly indeed. He hasn't made a big break on the king side or in the center or on the queen side. He's just waiting to see where black puts his king before he embarks on some great attack. So here's what I mean by casting on the queen side. With the pawn on b5, I think this is dubious because white breaks open the position. And here, well, the rook might well switch back to the a-file to target pawn on a6. And if the pawn advances here, well, that kind of looks a bit funny. Um, at some point you might be able to break open here, maybe a5 and weaken this one. And if, if black plays a5, then of course the b5 square is very weak. The knight can come in as well. So it's it's problematic casting queenside. But if you go on the king side, then that also allows white to target the king. It's possible to play like this, but then the knights will come into f4 and you want to weaken e6. And if here, well, maybe the knight comes back. Somehow the king doesn't look altogether secure here either. So let's see. So Vachey Lagarde, he did neither of those moves. He played b4. Now this is provocative in the extreme. If the knight goes to the side or backwards, well, perhaps black has achieved something. But Ivanchuk, not a man who is afraid of complications and not afraid to seize the initiative, he sacrificed the knight on d5 in this classic manner for the Sicilian. So that drives the knight back. Well, of course, black could give the piece back straight away, but in this position white has a huge positional advantage or maybe you can take here and just play with the king in the middle of the board and again white has a big positional advantage as well as chances to attack the king. So Vachy Le Grave 
brings the knight back to a7. I think that's not bad. And now the knight swings in. This is the point. Having got rid of the pawn here, of course, the f5 square is available for the knight. And black's king has enormous problems. Of course, it can still evacuate to the queen side, but then we take here and we prepare to swing the rook over to the queen side. It already looks too dangerous. So Vachy Le Grave captured on d5 and the knight came over. And, well, I mean, there, I think Vachy Le Grave chose the best way to defend the bishop. So, of course, we have this open e file, which makes life interesting for white. Um, instead of this, if bishop e6 closing the e file, then, of course, white wins, wins back the piece with f5. Uh, knight c8, not very good, blocks the rook. So knight c6 is definitely the best move. Bishop e4. Okay, now if bishop e6, again we take an f5. This would be a pragmatic way for black to play. Return the piece and perhaps try to sit this knight in on e5. It is possible to do that, but okay, Vachier Le Grave, very strong player indeed, and well, you know, he's also going for it. And here, maybe he missed a, uh, the best try, and that's to play rook d8, and now defend from the side. In, in this way, the rook actually is a, a little bit more active than in the game, because you also threaten to push your pawn to d5. Excuse me a moment, I'm just going to have a quick drink. But he chose king f8. I mean, it's very, very hard to defend this position with black when your opponent has the initiative. Rook here, rook e8, and now queen e2. Well, I think already this is tremendous for white. So black simply can't move the bishop because the rook on e8 is on prees. Rook h7, um, d5 would transpose to the game. Queen g4, and now d5. The rook comes back. Queen b6. I mean, black is completely tied up here. You can see that the, the king splits the rooks in two. And now a beautiful winning move from Ivanchuk. So simple, actually. The idea is simply to blast open the g-file and make the king. I mean, there's nothing to do here. You can just take the rook. So this is winning. Um, Vachy Le Grave tried knight d4. But now knight takes bishop, threatening queen g8 mate. He took the rook. And a check, check. And Ivanchuk took on e8. And this is simply winning for white now, because the king um, just gets mated. Um, here we shouldn't take the rook. That would be a mistake. Then white gets mated. <laughs> but instead queen f8. And now it all happens with checks. It's actually terribly easy here and we win the queen. Wonderful attacking display from Ivanchuk. You know, he he can defeat absolutely anyone, and he's already defeated Almodiar, uh, sorry, Wojtasek, Vallejo, Vashil Agrava in this tournament, but he's lost twice to Almodiarki and Aronian. So you never know quite what you can get with Ivanchuk, but you always get a great fight. So uh, that brought Ukraine up to just one point from the leaders. So Ukraine, Netherlands and Argentina on 14 points. And tomorrow, China against the USA and Russia play Argentina. Russia have played all the top teams. So they're going to play weaker teams now. So I still think Russia are the favourites, but let's see. Thanks for watching.